Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 23 of free AWS DevOps Zero to Hero series. And in this video, we will explore a concept called as secrets management. This video is very, very important from your interview point of view because 90% of the times you will be asked this question during your interview that how do you handle secrets or how do you manage sensitive information, whether you are on AWS, whether you are on Azure, GCP, or even on premises. So that's why I am making a dedicated video on secrets management. I could have explained this as part of different topics, but reason why I'm making as a de dedicated video so that you can explain this topic to the interviewer in a convincing way. And there are different ways of doing secrets management on AWS. There are different services, different tools. So let me break down and explain when should you go for which service offering on AWS. Okay. So without wasting any time, let's first explain. I mean, let me first explain you why this secrets management is very, very important for a DevOps engineer. As a DevOps engineer, you work on different tasks and you work on different activities, right? For example, you work on the CI CD implementation. During your CI CD implementation, you use Docker, for example. So there can be your Docker username, Docker password, or the registry URL that is required to upload your Docker image, right? And all of this is very, very sensitive. Let's say if this information is leaked, then anyone who has access, they can delete the images. They can upload the wrong images or the second thing. Let's say you are working with the CI CD and you have to interact with a database, for example. So again, the database username and password that you are doing using to integrate has to be very, very secure. If not, they will just access your database and delete the entries from the database. Let's say you are working on Ansible, right? You need access to your AWS account. Let's say you're working with Terraform. So again, you need your AWS provider credentials. So all of these things have to be kept very, very sensitive. If not, you, your organization will compromise on a lot of things, right? Because of your implementation, because of your data being compromised, it will impact the entire organization. So that's the reason why as a DevOps engineer, Secrets management is one of your key responsibilities. Now there are different solutions that are available for secrets management, but specifically coming to AWS, there are three very important things right on the AWS platform. One is you have your systems manager parameter store. Okay. Or there is a service on AWS, which is called as systems manager. Second thing is again, AWS provides you another service called as secrets manager. Okay. The first one is called as systems manager and the second one is called as secrets manager. Then there is another thing which is called as HashiCorp vault, which is not a AWS offering, right? HashiCorp vault is a HashiCorp offering, but it is very, very widely used in the market. And you can implement this solution on your AWS platform by yourself. This is not a AWS offering. You have to take care of this offering. I mean, if you install HashiCorp Vault and you manage by your, yourself, then you are responsible for your installation and configuration. Also, these two are the AWS offering. The reason why I have added this in the list is because many companies use HashiCorp Vault. Now let's try to understand when you should go for systems manager, when you should go for secrets manager, and when you should go for HashiCorp vault, because that is very, very important from your interview point of view. Going back and starting with the systems manager, if you watched our CI CD videos on AWS platform, that is day 13 and day 14, if I remember well, I used a lot of sensitive information such as Docker username, password, registry URL, and I secured them in the systems manager. Within the systems manager, there is something called as parameter store. Okay. So I went to the parameter store, Docker username, I stored in a string. 
Docker password and everything I have secured in uh, the password way, right? There are different ways in the parameter store, how you can put this information. I showed you that thing in the day 13 and day 14, right? In the CICD uh, videos that I have done. Now, when you can do these things in the parameter store, like when you can store this information and you can very easily retrieve the information from the parameter store, that is the systems manager. Then why should you go for the other solution such as secrets manager or HashiCorp vault? So let me explain a couple of minutes about systems manager, where if you store any information in the systems manager, it is very, very easy to retrieve, right? I've shown you in that video, all that you need to do is any other AWS service. If it tries to access uh, this information, right? What you need to do is you just need to grant that AWS service IAM role. Let's say CI/CD service want to access any anything from the systems manager parameter store. You need to assign the code pipeline or the code build the IAM role and using this IAM role, they will access the systems manager, right? So this is very, very simple to integrate and very simple to use as well. Then why should I go for secrets manager? So the thing is that AWS introduced secrets manager because a lot of times when you're working with this sensitive information, you might have to rotate the sensitive information automatically. Okay. What do you mean by rotating the information? Like, let's say you are using a certificate. Okay. As a DevOps engineer, let's say you are using a certificate and when you are using these certificates, you know, the certificates should be expired in a specific duration. Let's say once in 180 days, your certificate has to be expired and it should be automatically rotated. So even if your certificate is exposed or even if your certificate is compromised, someone has access to your certificates public key still if you rotate your certificates in right time, if you rotate your certificates once in 180 days, 270 days, 360 days, you will reduce the chance of, you know, risk. So even if your certificates uh, public key is exposed because once in 180 days, 90 days, you are rotating and you are changing the certificates automatically. So the chance of risk will reduce and who is doing this systems manager can do this automatically for you. Is it only with respect to certificates? No. Let's say you have password. Okay. And this password is a DB related password. Okay. And you are using this in one of your day to day activities because database is a very, very sensitive thing. Better put it in the secrets manager and ask your secrets manager to rotate this password once in every 90 days. That is once in every three months. Now, what will happen because of this? Like your chance of this password getting leaked and if it gets leaked, like because you are rotating it once in 90 days, once in two days, once in three days, however you would like to configure, then this password keeps changing automatically, right? So whoever has access to this password, they will not be able to access the database and your information will still be secure, right? So use secrets manager. When your information is very, very sensitive, like when you want to use databases, when you want to use the API tokens of services that is highly secure, but when you are using the CI CD solutions, such as your, uh, for example, your Docker username. Okay. So Docker username is not that sensitive information. You can go with your systems manager or the Docker registry URL. Again, that is not very, very secure. You know, for Docker registry URL, you can go with systems manager, but for Docker password, you can go with secrets manager, right? So use the combination of systems manager and secrets manager, right? If you have information that is not that much sensitive, still sensitive, but not highly sensitive, go with systems manager parameter store. But if that information is highly secure, then go with secrets manager because Using secrets manager, you can do a lot of additional things. That is, you can go with password rotation policy. You know, you can make sure that you add some additional uh, security configurations in the in the secrets manager. But secrets manager is slightly on a higher price when compared to systems manager. Because AWS is providing you all of these things. So 
you can use secrets manager but at the cost of paying high amount to aws so that's why always go with a combined solution that is systems manager plus secrets manager okay and retrieve the information from wherever you would like to if you want to retrieve username and register url of docker from systems manager yes assign the right iam role and do it and when you want to retrieve docker password from secrets manager again add that iam role capabilities to talk to the secrets management right let me give you an example because i don't want to you know when i am completing this topic i want everyone to understand this in a very very detailed way so let's say the same example i am using ci cd i am implementing a ci cd solution on the aws platform for which i am using aws code pipeline for example okay so i am using this aws code pipeline and in the aws code pipeline that i am writing you know i want to publish the images that are created by the ci cd solution to a docker image registry it can be docker hub it can be ecr anything right it, basically it's a container registry instead of saying it as docker registry let me call it as container registry okay so for this container registry definitely there will be a username there will be password and then there will be your container registry url right 1 2 and 3 which are sensitive information you don't want this information to be exposed to everyone who is using this ci cd solution first one is username second one is password third one is registry url now let's try to categorize these three things in terms of security level so username and registry url are not highly sensitive right they are important but they are not highly sensitive if your username is exposed still without password they will not be able to use uh, this you know they will not be able to uh, manipulate your docker images so username and registry url you can secure them in the systems manager parameter store whereas in the same example you have something called as docker password or your container registry password which you can store in the secrets manager right so that way what you are doing you are trying to use two solutions effectively and you are also keeping the cops cost optimization in your mind what happens if you store everything in the secrets manager aws will charge you slightly higher for that purpose you can use the systems manager and you can reduce the cost now you might be thinking abhishek what will happen with one username one password i can store it anywhere but when you are working in organization the number of usernames the number of passwords will keep on increasing okay and the number of secure things that you are doing in your secrets manager will become very difficult to manage as well because systems manager provides you multiple things such as rotation right there are different services that are offered by secrets manager for example let's say you are using a db service okay so secrets manager what it can do is it can integrate with lambda functions and it can ask you to write your custom secrets rotation policy okay you can integrate it with your custom lambda function logic as well right so because of these reasons during your interview you can say that i use a combination of both systems manager and secrets manager whenever it is required to use systems manager i'll go with it and whenever i require secrets manager i'll go with the other option now you might be asking that abhishek okay i understood about these things now why should i go for hashicorp vault okay when aws itself offers these two things for me then why should i go for another offering that is hashicorp vault so some of you who is following this series might be able to answer this by now that whenever you are using a aws managed offering right you will be tied to aws platform let's say your organization is using hybrid cloud that means combination of different clouds or multi cloud or your organization has plans to move from aws to azure then these things become a 
bottle neck for you okay so these things will become you know your headache of how to migrate these secrets again from aws systems manager to some other cloud providers different solution that they are offering now instead if your organization is using hashicorp vault right which is a centralized solution you can use it with aws you can use it with azure or you can use it with any other cloud platform is this the only advantage no hashicorp vault is a very dedicated secrets management solution that is available for years right now and it's an open source platform that means not just hashicorp but it is a community driven project as well now because of this what happens is that the vault offering has a lot of community backup and there are so many features right there are many additional features there are many uh, additional uh, encryption strategies that hashicorp vault offers over the aws managed offerings and because this is a community driven project there will be many additional features that keep on adding right so that's another advantage of using hashicorp vault and let's say in your organization if you are using multi cloud during your interviews go with hashicorp vault okay or if the interviewer ask you when did you migrate to aws and what were you using before that then probably you can say before migrating to aws we are using hashicorp vault we were using hashicorp vault right so i hope this difference is very clear to you and uh, try to answer this like take a note of it write down these things and be ready for your interview when interviewer is asking about this secrets management don't be blank be ready with your answer and tell them according to your organizational requirement okay so i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any feedback let me know in the comment section and do share this video with your friends and colleagues thank you so much see you all in the next video take care